After the Red River Rebellion, the people of Manitoba got many new rights, but it was not good enough for the Métis, the half-French, half-Aboriginal peoples of Canada. They were still discriminated against and felt as though many of their rights were not being fulfilled by the government. There was also many white, British Canadians moving into Manitoba. So many Métis decided to move to Saskatchewan in the Cree, Assiniboine territories west of Manitoba, where there were few white people and the land had not yet been taken by the Canadian government. They established the settlements of Fish Creek, St. Louis, Batoche, St. Laurent, and Duck Lake in Saskatchewan. Twelve years later, in 1882, the Canadian government sent out surveyors to plot the Métis and Aboriginal land in Saskatchewan for inhabitation by white Canadians. The surveyors are what started the Red River Rebellion and the Métis didn't want to mess with them, so they let them be. But in the next year, in 1883, the Métis learned that the town of St. Louis was sold to the British Colonization Company by the Canadian government without their consent. The Métis started having all their other towns threatened by the white Canadians, so they called back Louis Riel, who had fled to the US after the Red River Rebellion, and he returned in 1884 and started another rebellion. At the same time, the Cree and Assiniboine native tribes, led by Big Bear, had become frequently frustrated with the Canadian government as they were breaking native treaties and stealing their land. Big Bear was known as a peaceful man and tried to negotiate with the Canadian government, but the Canadian government didn't listen, so the Cree Assiniboine peoples staged a revolt in Saskatchewan. This Cree Assiniboine revolt was unrelated to the Métis one, but since it happened at the same time, in the same place, and with a common enemy, the Métis and the Cree Assiniboine people joined forces. During the Red River Rebellion, the Métis got out of hand because there was no Canadian enforcement in Manitoba to stop them. So shortly after the Red River Rebellion, the Canadian government formed the Northwest Mounted Police, also known as Mounties, to patrol the less inhabited areas of Canada, like Saskatchewan. They were despised by the Métis though. As tensions grew with the Métis, small skirmishes popped up all over Saskatchewan, but nothing major. In early 1885, Riel and his lieutenants, Gabriel Dumont and Honoré Jackson, assembled a force of about 300 Métis and a couple hundred Cree Assiniboine natives. At the same time, in Fort Carleton, the Canadian fort in the area, Reef Crozier assembled a force of about 100 men consisting of about 50 Mounties and 50 of the Prince Albert Volunteers, who met the Métis, led by Gabriel Dumont, right outside of Duck Lake on March 26th. Despite having superior training in a 7-pound cannon, the Métis doubled the Canadians in numbers and had cover, and the Métis won the battle. The government of Canada soon realized things were getting out of hand, and quickly mobilized a sizable force in the east of Canada that would be sent along the now-completed Canadian Pacific Railway to meet up with the British General Frederick Middleton and his force of Winnipeg Rifles in the West. Some of the regiments included the 10th Royal Grenadiers, the Montreal-based Mount Royal Rifles, the Toronto-based Queen's Own Rifles, and the Quebec City-based 9th Voltigeur. These Canadian regiments in the Canadian Army were wildly understaffed and under-equipped, so inexperienced civilians had to be recruited from all major cities, further hampering the deployment process. On March the 30th, the Cree natives started raiding the white outposts, and they could not be stopped by the under-equipped Mounties. The Cree then entered Frog Lake, and killed or captured all the white people they could find, this being later known as the Frog Lake Massacre. The Cree then surrounded Fort Pitt, held by the Mounties and some civilians, and laid siege to it. The beleaguered white defenders, being outnumbered ten to one, decided to surrender to the Cree. The peaceful Big Bear let the Mounties go, but kept the townspeople as hostages. By mid-April, most of the Canadian troops had arrived and started pushing into Métis territory. On the 24th of April, the main Canadian column of 900 men, led by Frederick Middleton, was passing by the Fish Creek Ravine when a force of over 200 Métis, led by Gabriel Dumont, 
ambushed the Canadians while they were halfway across. They cut the column in half and sent it into disarray. The Canadian cannons were not able to provide sufficient fire, but were effective at scaring away a sizable Cree force. Few Canadians died, but many were hit and wounded. The Canadians, though quadrupling the Métis in numbers, were forced to retreat and momentarily halt their advance. It was a momentous victory for the Métis. On May the 2nd, Cree Assiniboine forces led by Fine Day successfully held back the forces of Colonel William Otter at the Battle of Cutknife, achieving another victory for the Cree. On May the 9th was the decisive battle of the war, the Canadian taking of the Métis capital, Batoche. Nearly a thousand Canadians led by Frederick Middleton, consisting of the Toronto raised 10th Grenadiers, the East Ontario raised Midland Regiment, the 90th Winnipeg Rifles, a few Canadian Scout Cavalrymen, some Mounties, a Gatling gun, and a couple cannons attacked the town. The Métis numbered only about 250, but had set up good defenses and were trained sharpshooters. Heavy fighting ensued all day. At the end of the day, there was no clear winner. Middleton's force retired to a camp about a mile from Batoche, where for the next two days they would shell the Métis positions. By the 12th of May, the Métis defenses were in bad shape. The artillery had not only pounded and destroyed many of them, but many Métis were injured as well. The Métis were also desperately short of ammunition and supplies. The Canadians drew out many Métis from their positions by feinting an attack on the flank, and then charged forward with hundreds of militiamen. The Métis resisted, but were eventually overrun. Many were captured, including Louis Riel, and the Métis rebellion effectively crushed. The Cree natives, and what was left of the Métis, still resisted though, and on May the 28th, 400 Canadian militia attacked the defensive positions held by about 200 Cree and Métis men at Frenchman's Butte. The Cree were once again successful at beating back the Canadians, but had to retreat from their battered positions afterwards. The Cree force of about 150 men now, led by Big Bear, was traveling up by Loon Lake when 75 men of the Northwest Mounted Police and Alberta Mounted Rifles attacked and dispersed them, retaking their white prisoners and killing a handful of Cree men. Big Bear was captured on July 2nd and would die three years later. The rebellion was over at this point and many of the remaining Métis and Cree warriors were either captured, surrendered, or repressed. Gabriel Dumont managed to flee to the US where he would spend the rest of his life but Louis Riel underwent a lengthy trial and was convicted of his crimes and executed a few months later. This revolt was the last Aboriginal or Métis revolt in Canadian history. <laughs>